This is a demonstration of a throttle calibration uh, routine that uh, I developed for my hack controller that I'm going to be using on my e-bike. We, we have here is our standard thumb based uh, or thumb style hull based uh, sensor, uh, throttle sensor used on a lot of e-bikes. Um, the problem with these are that the repeatability is very poor and their offsets are terrible. The, the variation in the offset uh, from day to day or even motion to motion is, is pretty poor. Um, because of that you need to really have some uh, additional smarts uh, placed on conditioning the signal so that it's, it's a, a useful um, input to your controller with uh, good repeatability. So we'll just uh, do a quick um, demo of, of what it actually does here. Connect it up, get into the uh, throttle calibration panel. Okay, so we can actually see it. Um, apologize if, if none of it's uh, or some of it's not quite clear. Um, so just to go quickly through it, uh, we have throttle fault limits. These specify the count values uh, at which the controller deems that the throttle is no longer functioning correctly. So if uh, the input reaches these values, then the controller will shut down and, and throw a fault. So first thing we got to do is we got to set what these limits are. Um, since the pot or the uh, I guess the hull based uh, throttle here is already at rest position, um, I'll just set the min limit. Now this sets uh, sets up two values here. Uh, one is the actual what the raw value is, and I've got the limit here uh, set to be 100 counts below. Um, that limit, 127 counts, if I reach that, my pot uh, or hull sensor, if it reaches that, then my controller will say, hey, I've got a bad pot, bad uh, hull sensor, let's throw a fault, shut down the controller. All right, so now on the other extreme, um, if I take it out to wide open throttle, um, set the max limit. The raw value coming off the actual hull sensor is 919 out of uh, 1023. So I've set uh, my fault limit to be 100 counts above that. Um, since I'm not really thinking that we'll ever hit that with this particular one, uh, I can you know, bring it up a little higher um, so that uh, we've got a little tighter control over the actual faults. So I'll go 150 and uh, 975 and update that. So the update limits actually updates this in real time. Um, the parameters are sent to the hack controller to its RAM which is being uh, used by the controller to to uh, determine whether or not uh, you know, the, the signal is outside the, uh, the limits. Um, if I were to power the controller off, I'd lose those values. So before I finish this up, I need to update the flash. Um, the next thing that's important is establishing the, the actual range of the pot so that you can get repeatability. Um, to do that, you need to establish a lower and upper dead band, which uh, you know, it's sort of the, the zero starting point and your end point of your, of your uh, uh, pot throw or, or hull throw. So what I have is 227 is the raw lower count. So that is the resting position. Um, because there's variation that what that rest will be, it could be 227 now, it could be 230 you know, in five minutes, it could be 200 in 10 minutes. Uh, it's kind of all over the place a little bit. So I want to bring it up high enough that we're always going to have a zero point established. So I'm going to say 250. 
for the upper level, um, I've seen this thing vary uh, quite a bit. So 919 is what the raw upper limit is. So we'll just say you know, 875 for now is the, uh, the high side uh, or high uh, dead band value. Right. So now that I've updated that, my map value is now reading zero at resting, which is what you, you want. So um, I actually start moving the sensor here. I'm kicking it. It's very repeatable. <clears throat> the next thing you'll notice is that um, my response, the green, the green line here is the actual mapped output response. And you'll notice that it's not a linear response and that's been done purposely um, for halfway through the motion so both zero to to medium throttle it's a fairly gentle response but once we get beyond medium it climbs up pretty quickly to maximum uh, wide open throttle and you know, this has been based on experience with electric vehicles in the past that a lot of people when they drive or ride their bikes or, or drive an electric vehicle that you want fairly uh, uh, light control at low throttle values so that you're not getting you know, a lot of jerky uh, responses. But you know when you want to have full throttle, you want full throttle, so uh, you want to get to that very quickly. Um, the mapped output of the, uh, the sensor um, can be adjusted so that uh, we can get to more closer approximation of a linear response if we want just by adjusting the, the sliders here. So I'm bringing that up slowly. Trying to make it somewhat uh, smooth. There. I'm going to update that so now that is now live and it's in the controller. So I'll just go. And you'll notice that now the green bar is not rising as quickly, and it's a very it's a lot more linear response. So to finish this off, I'm just going to update everything to flash, and now that is currently in the controller. And if I lose power, it'll remain. So thank you for. Uh, watching my video and uh, hopefully you'll stay tuned for the next uh, two which will be coming up where I will demonstrate the current tuning uh, stimulus tool that I have for tuning the current loop and the velocity tuning tool which will set up the uh, velocity loop on the uh, Pack controller so that I will be able to uh, implement cruise control and uh, a few other niceties.